Hey guys, here we go into a video on Naoya Inoue and his fight against Nonito Doner um, coming up, which is going to be a fantastic fight um, for as long as it lasts. Now, this fight is 100% going to end in knockout. There's just no way that it doesn't. And um, the question is, is, is who is going to knock who out? Now, conventional wisdom goes with the younger, harder hitting, probably faster you know, not as crafty, um, but better technically, uh, Naoya Inoue, um, simply because people think he's fresher, you know, what people know about boxing, um, and how to win fights, you know, that's like, you know, what they say, but, um, um, this is going to be a really interesting fight for Inoue, because it's going to be testing completely different skills than in his last fight. Now, in his last fight, he had to overcome his inability to control the space between him and his opponent, uh, and then find a way inside and get his opponent to stay on the line with him to knock him out. And he did a fantastic job um, knocking that guy out um, and catching him, getting him to stay on the line with him. Um, however, Nonito Donaire is going to give him different challenges than his last opponent um, in that the kind of skills and the way that Nonito Donaire likes to fight kind of put uh, Naoya Inoue in his wheelhouse. Now, I think that it's going to be an interesting fight. And what I mean by that um, is that I think that Naoya Inoue is going to have the advantage uh, with first contact. That's what I, I like to kind of represent um, the beginning, the opening engagement. So, like, usually that'll be the fainting, like the first action in a sequence, right? Who sets it off? What do they set it off with? Are they setting it off with a faint head movement, a probe? Um, you know, are they looking to control their opponent in a different way? Um, what do they do? And I think that uh, Naonya Inoue is going to have control of that, um, but mostly because Nonito Donaire doesn't look to control the space between him and his opponent. He's actually kind of like an aggressive counterpuncher. Um, you know, classically like um, Jamal and Jamel Charlo. Um, if you watch my take on their, on his fight, Jamal Charlo's fight with Brandon Adams, and the reason he looked so lackluster, in spite of the fact that he's obviously a much, much, much superior athlete. But the problem that Nayo Inoue is going to face in this fight is not winning first contact. It's going to be um, kind of, I, you know, I don't want to say second contact. I don't really have a term for it, but when they stay on the line. And Naomi Inoue has a few problems. Number one, he doesn't always set his punches up super well, but I think he's going to be fast enough uh, with his weight transitions to be able to get his one-twos off before Inu um, Donaire can counter. I think that's what's going to happen. Even though I am going to show you that uh, Naomi Inoue is susceptible to the counter, I do think that he's going to be a little bit too fast. Um... But the worst problem is if he doesn't knock Nanito Donaire out with that first one-two, uh, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. And we're going to kind of talk about why. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the film. So the first thing you notice, Nicholas Walters, he's going to shoot a jab. And Nanito Donaire does his best uh, catch and counter style, right? Now I say catch and counter. I call this beat. It's a beat for catch and counter because it's a double weight transition. It's one to the inside. And then one to or one to the outside, and then one to the inside, um, and you're looking to make that at the same time that your opponent makes only one weight transition, right? So it's your opponent's jabbing, you slip the jab with a half a weight transition, you come back with the the rest of the weight transition into a right hand. Um, but this is the same motion if he was gonna slip and catch the jab um, on his left glove. It's the same motion though, right? Because you slip catch it and then you come back with another weight transition it's all the same but for timing sake i just call it that but he goes in boom with a great overhand right and because of the fact that Naoya Inoue doesn't faint when he sets his shots up he doesn't probe he doesn't know how to look for information again he's very green guys um he might be susceptible to this and this is a tactic that Nonito Donaire likes to use a lot and again no control over the space between him and his opponent. Even though his opponent is jabbing him, he eats the jab, but he's able to pull away and walk his weight. If you notice here, look at his left foot. He's stepping with his left foot so he can throw his weight into his right leg. It's kind of a manual interpretation of a, of a weight transfer. It's very similar to what um, uh, Mikey Garcia does in order to get weight into his right hand so he can transfer his weight because he, he doesn't have a core. He doesn't have what are called... Uh, abs 
But um, so he kind of cheats and he throws his weight into his right foot um, or into his left foot to get weight into his right hand. Um, you've seen um, there was another fighter do that. Oh, Amir Khan, where you flash the lead hand, right? And then you turn it into a hook kind of thing to drift your weight back into your center line uh, onto your right foot before you explode out of your right foot onto your left foot again. Um, but you're kind of manipulating your weight transitions. But it's a very similar tactic where you can kind of slip to the inside, right? Or, yeah, slip to the outside, rather, of your opponent. But um, you're supposed to turn your hips. So his hips are going to go from a neutral position. See how they're cocking back onto his right leg as he steps. Boom, and then he goes into the right hand. Um, that's the basic motion, um, and you're going to shorten and, and increase this depending on how much power you want into it or how much speed. Um, but it's all in that weight transition. Um, but as you can see, even though he gets hit by the jab, he does a very good job of landing the counter right hand over the top. Now, you can't really see it super clear in this clip because it got cut off, but um, Walters is shooting a jab here in your weight and... Um, no, uh, Donaire is slipping to the inside on the same beat, right? So it's slip, catch, and then counter with the left hook, right? Same basic principle as catching and countering, except for you're moving your head um, and you're not blocking the shot. But the principle is the same in the, the fundamental techniques. But um, as you can see, it's on the same timing, though. So it's a little harder to walk your opponent into shots, Um because you're waiting for the shot to come before you start transitioning your weight, rather than slipping with that shot and landing it. So it's a catch and counter style, just because of the way that the, the weight transitions, the beats of them go. But um, um, oh, and then what happens in that next scene? I don't even know. It's been a while since I looked at this. Oh, again, uh, countering, um, again countering over the top, and again. You know, Walter's showing that even he might be too fast for this technique, right? Um, and I think that Naoya Inoue probably has better technique than Nicholas Walters. Even though Nicholas Walters has very good technique, you guys. He's very, very, very solid. Um, but um, again, you know, Donaire, this is one of the few times in which he looks to control the space. He's going to be able to hide this right hand. Boom. Right? But he doesn't look to control the space at all. And this scene right here is very interesting because... Even though Donaire gets dropped right there, I want to talk about all the time, all the space up to here. When Donaire is coming forward, throwing shots, look at how when he shoots this right hand, boom, he's going to slip right there, right? There's a slip. There's the opportunity there for him to fight on the inside and slip a shot, right? So he has very, very, very good control of his hands and his body in this position, um, which means that he's it's a lot of craft that he has, but he's, very, he's pretty decent fighting on the inside, being able to, again, he's going to throw this hook. And then after he throws that hook, he doesn't find himself off balance enough that he can't control his opponent here, you know. And he's what he's doing is he's staying on the line with um, with uh, Nicholas Walters, even, and he's just getting past the first layer of Nicholas Walters' attack, right? Which is um, whoops, <laughs> which is back here the these attacks and then after he puts on enough pressure to close the distance himself and fight on the inside he's able to put a lot of pressure on him now the reason that this is important is because he's punching with um with walters here you see this left hook that's almost blocked right that's almost blocked he almost gets his glove on it but and nicholas walters has better defense than naoya inoue right but he's punching with him and we know he has a good left hook right again a good right hand there Great work on the inside, but Naoya Inoue didn't have enough, or um, Nonito didn't have enough, you know, power in his shots to really bother Walters, you know, probably from coming up in weight and not, you know, training correctly to build his his body into that kind of uh, that kind of strength for that size, but still landing shots on the inside, and that's what we want to pay attention to. Again, landing shots. Look at this huge left hook that he lands here, right? Boom. Right? I think it winds up getting blocked, but, yeah, um, Walters blocks it. But look at all the weight that Nonito Donaire is getting in this shot. Look at how good he is fighting on the inside, fighting on the line with his opponent. This is going to be a big problem for Naoya Inoue because Naoya Inoue doesn't have his hands up. Notice that Walters is blocking this shot, right? Now Walters gets cracked with this next left hook, right? Boom! And then Walters is, he's on shaky legs. And luckily for him, the round ends. But look at that clean shot right there. Look at where, look at where Walters' hands are when he gets hit, 
right? His shoulder is up. His right glove is up, right? He's got pretty decent defense while he's throwing this shot, and he still gets cracked by that punch. Nuno Donaire is very dangerous on the inside, you guys. Very dangerous. He has the opportunity to land a lot of big shots fighting on the line with Nayoya Inoue. This is going to be very dangerous for, for Inoue. And again, Walter's doing a good job fighting on the inside. Boom. He's going to block this shot again. Look at his glove is up. And he blocks that shot again. I think he blocks it. It looks like he blocks it. But he's landing these big shots. And look at the next big shot. Right? So, gets out of the way of that somehow. You know, just moving back. But fighting on the line, Nonita Donaire has shown that he's very dangerous. That he's able to land these shots on the inside. Now, the reason this is going to be a big problem for Naoya Inoue, as we get into the Inoue film, when Inoue throws punches, look at where both of his hands are right now. Right? And we know that the timing that um, Nonita Donaire likes to counter on is on that catch and counter style, right? It's after your complete weight transition. And as you see here, that jab comes, and where's Naomi Inoue's hand right here? Down. And he gets hit with his with a left hook from Rodriguez. Boom. Right? And it's this is the, this is basically the same exact timing that he's gonna have to deal with when fighting Nonito Doner. But Donito, Nonito Donaire has made his entire career fighting on this timing. This is the only thing that Nonito Donaire is really good at, you know? And if you guys haven't seen Nonito Doner um, train, by the way. He has amazing technique on the heavy bag, you guys. It's insane. Like, holy crap. I would definitely recommend you guys checking it out. But again, look at Naoya Inoue. Not fainting, not giving any different looks, right? He's kind of here, like a little bit of moving, a little bit, not a lot. Not enough to get um, Rodriguez out of position, but when he explodes out of his guard with his jab, look at where his hands go, right? He's, he's not using his chin to block, or his shoulder to block his chin. His right glove is straying not only away from his body, but away from his chin as well. And as he ends that weight transition, his hands don't come back up, right? That's going to be a huge problem for him against Sonny Tudonaire, who's going to be looking to counter him um, on that catch and counter style, right? So just imagine him slipping to the inside or slipping to the outside of this jab here, right? The jab comes, he slips to the outside, and then comes back with the right hand over the top. Look how easy of a shot that is for him to land there. And again, especially with the jabs to the body. And again, when they throw punches together and they're both standing on the line, look at, even though Rodriguez's hand is up, right, he's still getting hit, but where is where is Nayonya Inoue's left hand, right hand, right? It's at his waist, you know? And his left hand is nowhere near uh, in a position to... Um, defend himself either. Again, look at when he punches. His left hand is here. The reason that this is a problem, though, you guys, is because, number one, he doesn't set his punches up super well. We know this, you guys. We know this. This is not new, right? He doesn't faint. He doesn't have a lot of probes. He doesn't have a super active guard. Um, but he hits really hard. But the problem is he's fighting someone who's going to be on the line with him, who is a little bit better fundamentally in this aspect of the game. Um, in this particular aspect, Donito Donaire is better than um, Nayonya Inoue. The only difference is, is that Nayonya Inoue still hits way harder, still has way better technique, and is probably, um, for first contact, just much faster than him. But um, again, you know, when, when Inoue throws, falling off balance, and that's going to make him very susceptible to counter punches. Again, look at this right hand, right? If a counter were to come here, right, a catch and counter, a, a left hook comes, or even coming back with the right hand, right, now Yuni Inoue is stuck on the line, and his hands are down. Boom. And again, when he throws these shots on the inside, this is where Nonito Donaire likes to throw the most of his punches, right? Catch, and then go in for another counter. Now, I think that this is going to be a very difficult fight for as long as it lasts. Um, I think that Inoue... Um, is is very likely to win the fight. I do think that he's probably going to win, um, but that doesn't mean that does not mean that this is an easy fight for him um, against um, against Donaire. In spite of the fact that Donaire has looked very vulnerable in, in you know basically all his fights since Nicholas Walters, you know he hasn't looked like you know I don't know the guy you heard beat. Um, uh, the Raging Bull? I can't remember that guy's name right now. The Southpaw. 
man, Vic Darchinian. I love that guy, man. Oh, I'm probably gonna go watch one of his fights after this, man. I miss that guy. But uh, Vic Darchinian was, um, you know, he. I like that guy a lot. I, I'm a big fan. But anyway, um, you know, and and even in that fight, you know, Donaire had a lot of problems in that fight, you know, and that's probably like his most signature win, you know, maybe the Fernando Montiel because of that brutal catch and counter style um, knockout that he had there. But but regardless, regardless, um, um, I do think that Naoya Inoue is going to win this fight. But Nonito Donaire is no joke, you guys. Um, keys to victory, I would say for Nonito Donaire, um, get on the inside, land your hooks. You know, go. I would say for him to start going to the body early, um, because Inoue is really loose. He likes to just rattle his shots off, and because he's not really tight. He's not really, like, compact. I think he's susceptible to the left hook to the body, uh, especially because he doesn't set up any of his shots. So that's where, if I were Donaire, I would start. Um, and uh, for for Nayoya Inoue, to be honest, if he can learn to control the space between him and Donaire and use his jab effectively on the outside, not as a punch, not as a range finder, but probing and feinting, Keeping Donaire off balance because Donaire is really bad like that. We saw what happened to him against Rigondeaux, right? Rigondeaux schooled him. Easy peasy. But um, but uh, that would be Naoya Inoue's best shot at winning the fight. Um, or like the way that he could do it the easiest. You know, he already has a really good shot at winning the fight. So you don't really need to say, oh, he needs to do anything different than he what he normally does. Um... <laughs> Because, you know, it might only take one punch from him. You know, who knows? Um, I am picking Inoue to win, but I wouldn't be surprised if Donaire could pull it off. Um, especially with how green Inoue looks, um, you know, fighting on the inside, setting up his punches. In spite of the fact that he punches so hard, he has such great technique. He is very, very, he is a very, very, very polished striker, you know, and... Um, that's a really fascinating idea I want you guys to think about. You know, the difference between being a striker and being a boxer, right? And don't think about brawler. It's not brawling. That's, you know, it, that has nothing to do with punching, right? Um, but being a striker, a very, very polished striker. And this is really interesting too, you guys. Um, if you guys want to go watch uh, some Nyonya Inoue f um, film study of your own, go watch him spar. You know, this is really fascinating because... If you watch him spar, some of the bigger guys, they'll kind of start playing with him because he's smaller, and they'll they'll fight him in a way that's not like giving him the respect that he deserves, and they'll kind of start schooling him a little bit. They'll start putting good pressure on him. They'll start, you know, showing him some stuff, and then all of a sudden, he'll just be like, man, screw that, and he will hit those guys so freaking hard that he'll drop them that uh you know he'll he'll knock him around and then they'll stop you know they'll stop you know outsmarting him but it's really interesting to watch and see that that's his that's his um his way of solving that problem in training of of having difficult sparring is just show them oh i don't care about being better being a better fighter or having better cognitive ability or you know because i hit hard you know and it's been kind of the way that I've seen his boxing career going, you know, when the fights that I have seen. Um, except for the, when he fights Southpaws, I think he did a really, really good job against uh, Payano. I covered that video as well. Um, I covered that fight as well. I think he did a brilliant job of setting that shot up. But his technical ability, um, his boxing IQ is just a little bit subpar for me uh, as far as, like, fighting right-handed fighters. But um, I do expect him to win this fight. Um and yeah but anyway i'll be looking forward to watching it because yeah um i'm excited to see if he starts growing as a fighter but um anyway don't forget to like comment and subscribe and um yeah thanks guys